Welcome to my lab. I'm Drew Collip. In today's lab, we're going to make LB agar plates. I will demonstrate every step of the process from mixing the powder with the water, to autoclaving, to letting it cool, pouring the plates, and stacking them for storage later on. Here I've measured out nutrient agar on this whey paper. We'll place it into an Erlenmeyer flask for mixing. We're making a 2.3% weight by volume solution. Here we have water, we'll pour some in. We're making enough to make five plates, 125 mils of water being added to the powdered nutrient agar. Nutrient agar needs to be warmed to dissolve in solution. It is currently not dissolved in the water, it is suspended in the water. We will take care of that during the autoclaving process. Autoclaving is the process where we heat the sample to very high temperatures under high pressure to sterilize it. This temperature will dissolve the nutrient agar into the water. We'll cap it with this foam plug. Insert the cap into the neck of the Erlenmeyer flask and use a small piece of autoclave tape to secure it to the glass itself. Don't use too much, autoclave tape is expensive. You can see the autoclave tape has green lines. Under the high pressure, high temperature of the autoclave, the lines will turn black. A pedal on the ground opens the door to this autoclave. The heavy door slides down, revealing the inside compartment. Inside are two racks. Make sure you wear heat resistant gloves to protect your hands and don't reach in with your arms. The racks slide out. Your sample is placed into an autoclave bin, placed onto the rack, can be slid in. Press the pedal again to close the door. Make sure you don't get your finger stuck in the way. Get your finger stuck in the way, that's what the red button is for. Pro tip, push up on the door slightly. Many a time, a cycle can fail because the door wasn't properly sealed. Here we have a touch screen, liquid 20, 20 minutes on a liquid cycle. Liquid 30, 30 minutes. Gravity 30, this is with a faster exhaust of the steam and melt agar. We're going to use liquid 20 for this cycle. We press the button, it takes us to another screen where we see that same cycle, liquid 20. It's going to go 121 degrees Celsius for 20 minutes. Press the button and the cycle begins. The machine will start making a lot of noise. Now be warned, when the door seals, a piston will push up against it. It will be very startling the first time you witness it. Watch the door. There it is. So don't be alarmed, that is completely normal. Once the door is sealed, the chamber will start filling with steam. Hot steam has a low density. It will rise higher. As it fills, it'll push the air inside out the drain. Eventually, the steam will come in contact with your sample, and at high temperature and high pressure, it will sterilize the entire sample over a period of time. This is a 20 minute cycle. It will raise the temperature up to 121 degrees at a high pressure and keep it there for 20 minutes. This cycle takes about an hour to complete. There's always a waiting period at the end for safety reasons where the door cannot be opened. I have recorded much of this time, not the entire hour. If you'd like to skip forward, skip to the 10 minute 45 second mark.
When the cycle is done, open the door using the pedal. Make sure you wear your gloves, the sample will be extremely hot. Pull the tray out as to not reach in with your arms and potentially burn them. Now take a look at the sample here. The heat has dissolved the nutrient agar completely. You can see the autoclave tape has turned black indicating it has been sterilized. Be careful not to shake it too much to produce bubbles. Remove the tray and clean up your workstation when you're done. It's always a good idea to close the autoclave before you go. While pouring our plates today, we're going to use a Bunsen burner. Let's talk about proper operation of a Bunsen burner. We take the hose, plug it into the valve. We then make sure our Bunsen burner is stable on the bench. We obtain our flint, Please don't play with this. The flint is expensive. It sparks when you flick it. Turn on the gas and firmly light with one flick. There's no need to adjust the settings on the Bunsen burners in our labs. They're preset. Ask an instructor if there's an issue. When you're done, make sure you turn the gas completely off and never leave a flame unattended. After a period of cooling, your flash should be 
cool enough to hold with your hand. It should be warm, but cool enough to hold with your hand. You can mix it around, make sure you don't create too many bubbles. We have our plates set out. We're going to pour five plates, laying them out, easy to access them. We will light our Bunsen burner. What we're doing here is we're not heating the glass, we're just heating the air inside the neck of the glass. So that hot air rises and any contaminants falling in will be pushed out. Remove the autoclave tape, that's no longer needed. Remove the plug, make sure your Bunsen burner's turned on. We heat the neck and we pour. Commit, pour it directly. Don't be too shy, it'll drizzle down the side if you're too shy. We heat the neck in between. Again, we're not heating the glass, we're heating the air in the neck of the glass. We want to pour it about halfway full. You can look at the side there. It's a bit of a challenge with this camera in the way. Hopefully you do a better job. And your last dish is usually never too full. Sometimes you have to play with it a bit. Cover them up, wait for them to solidify. Now that we're done with the Bunsen burner, turn it off and put it away. Remember, never leave a flame unattended. The nutrient agar, when it is liquid, it is clear. You can see through it. You can see it's quite bright yellow and it is clear. We do get some condensation on the lids. But you can see it is clear. After a period of time, they will solidify. They will turn opaque like this. You can see these are now solid and the color has changed completely. It is now a light yellow and it is opaque. We can now pick them up. They won't spill. You can see they're half full, ready for storage. Stack them up. Usually when we store plates, we stack them upside down, especially when cultures are on them. So condensation doesn't drip down from the top. Until next time.